What you see on the screen now is considered the first vending machine in history. Yeah, it looked like that. It was a very simple device. You threw a coin and got a glass of holy water in exchange. This machine was first described in the works of Hero of Alexandria, a mathematician and engineer who lived during the first century AD. Nowadays, these machines are everywhere, but it's difficult to imagine that they were invented that long ago. In this video, we'll talk about technologies and inventions of the past, which even today can shock the whole modern world. Here we go. More than 2,000 years ago, a powerful weapon was created in China. It could only be compared in power to the Kalashnikov rifle. It was probably the first rapid-fire weapon in history, although people were still far away from the invention of bullets and other modern gizmos. And if you don't understand why it's so cool, well, here's a simple explanation. The more shells a soldier can fire, the more efficient he is. And the Chinese warriors were incredibly efficient thanks to the repeating Zhuj crossbow. The action of stringing the bowstring, placing the projectile, and lowering the bowstring could be done with one hand. If you've seen medieval crossbows, you can imagine that this Chinese crossbow was very different. And thanks to the magazine case with bolts, the Zeus crossbow could fire from 7 to 10 bolts in 15 to 20 seconds. But we're talking about the first version, while an upgraded version of this crossbow could also shoot two or three bolts simultaneously. For comparison, an ordinary crossbow can only shoot about two bolts per minute, and the best archer can shoot 10 arrows. See the difference? And all this in the second or 3rd century AD, or maybe even before that. By the way, the Zhuge crossbow was last used in real battles in the late 19th century. It's not just a crossbow, but a timeless classic. And here's another interesting fact. The Chinese repeating crossbow shoots bolts at the same speed as the Winchester Model 1873 lever-action rifle. It's not as good as the AK-47, of course, but still. However, the automatic crossbow rifle is not the only technology of ancient China that amazes us. In southeast China, archaeologists found a 2,000-year-old working tool. It's a hydraulic hammer. Water plus gravity are the perfect tandem for agricultural work. The flow turns the logs and the hammers fall under their own weight, hitting the grain and crushing it. No electricity, no physical labor, no lunch breaks. The hydraulic hammer can work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and each hammer will hit with a force of 445 newtons. So one machine will be able to replace up to 10 people. And it doesn't need to eat, sleep, snack, or check their Instagram feed. It's very convenient. Chinese craftsmen were far ahead of their time with this invention, at least by, I don't know, 15 years? For years, the hydraulic hammer was used to crush grain and produce flour. But some centuries later, it was used for metal casting during the Chinese Industrial Revolution. And it's still used all over the world in modern factories 2,000 years later. Of course, hydraulic hammers look and work a little differently today, but the principle remains the same. All right, let's leave China and move on to ancient Egypt. When it comes to ancient vehicles, what do you imagine? Probably chariots? Maybe Viking ships? A Trojan horse as a last resort? But certainly not a boat the size of a modern aircraft carrier. Meanwhile, it's a real boat from the 3rd century BC. This huge galley was known as Tessera Cantaris, and it was built by order of Pharaoh Ptolemy IV Philopater. And the ship was so big that some scientists doubt whether it existed at all. It supposedly was 130 meters long, 20 wide, 25 meters high, and was all made of wood. Tessera Cantaris was the largest wooden ship in history. It had two bows, two sterns, and in fact looked like two very long boats connected by a platform, something like an ancient catamaran weighing almost 4,000 tons. It was supposed to demonstrate the power and wealth of Egypt and obviously the amount of wood they had to spare. Unlike modern aircraft carriers, which move thanks to the energy of nuclear reactors, the Tessera Conteras could only rely on the power of the rowers. And there were 4,000 of them, 50 oars on each side. It's not clear how the Egyptians managed to accommodate so many people and make them row simultaneously. There were also 400 sailors on board, as well as 2,850 soldiers. On one hand, it sounds incredibly cool, a whole small town in a boat. But on the other hand, just imagine how crowded it was, and the working conditions of the rowers. Definitely not a dream job. Let's remain in the country of the pyramids and take a look at another invention from the past, but worthy of the future. Some people feel disgust at everything connected with war, and it's pretty obvious why. However, many scientific discoveries were made thanks to the desire to defeat the enemy. Wars have always stimulated technology, and as a result, mankind has learned how to create entire factories to create war machines. And what about the ancient world? Well, not in vain we mentioned factories, right? For example, let's talk about tanks. Most likely, you thought about them when I mentioned military machines. Tanks are like a modern version of the ancient battle chariot. Even scientists are talking about that. In the end, the chariot provided mobility on the battlefield and was not just a means of transportation, but a formidable weapon. But armies needed a lot of chariots, and therefore, 3,000 years ago, Pharaoh Ramesses II built a factory that produced them. The Battle of Kadesh was around the corner. It was the largest chariot battle ever fought. In 12 
1274 BC, the Egyptians sent a great number of chariots to battle, and eventually there were about 4,000 chariots from both sides on the battlefield. Imagine the heat, the dust, and the screams. But let's get back to the factory. Archaeologists believe that it was located in the Nile Delta, and in addition to training grounds, there was a real assembly line. It was about the same as those at any modern factory, except it didn't have a conveyor belt. Chariots were assembled from parts that were created separately, and this greatly accelerated the process. So, if you're told that it was Henry Ford who created the assembly line method in the 20th century, you can argue that it was the Egyptians who did it 3,000 years ago. But not only the Egyptians and Chinese had amazing inventions, are you familiar with the name Archimedes? You probably are. Even those who are not interested in history have heard about this ancient scientist. In his time, Archimedes made many discoveries in the field of geometry. He was the first to mention some ideas about mathematical analysis and laid the foundation for mechanics, hydrostatics, and he invented the pulley system. Today, it's used everywhere, but in ancient times, heavy loads were lifted only by people, and the heavier the load was, the more people it took to lift it. For example, to get something off the ground that weighed a ton, it was necessary to call at least 40 people. Can you imagine how hard it was to build anything? Wow! But Archimedes came up with a way to make people stronger without any mutations. Only a system of pulleys and winches that made it easier to lift any load. In simple words, the weight of the cargo is distributed on a rope. The longer it is, the more weight a person can lift. And although the whole process takes more time, it can be done with less than 40 people. There's even a legend that Archimedes alone was able to pull a ship to shore using only his pulley system. Hopefully, then he watched a bunch of people trying to push the ship back into the water and giggled. Okay, well, Archimedes and his pulleys, ropes, levers, and other inventions are quite famous. But what if I told you there's at least one copy of a Swiss army knife in the world which is 1800 years old? And of course, it's not from Switzerland. The knife was actually created by Roman craftsmen. It includes a spoon, a fork, a knife, an awl, and a small shovel. Everything that a rich traveler needed in ancient times. I have no idea what he did with the awl and the shovel. Needless to say, the metal faded a little and bent over time. But if you could look at a modern copy, then, hell, is there one on eBay? I'd totally buy that. Unlike the usual Swiss Army knife, which is appreciated for its convenience and functionality, its ancient Roman version emphasized the status of the owner. Not everyone could afford to eat well on the road, let alone do it with proper cutlery. Even today. In fact, Romans carried a whole set of silverware in their pockets. Maybe in the other pocket they carried a dinnerware set inherited from their grandparents. Now, let's talk a little bit about construction. When it comes to technologies that were used, for example, by the ancient Egyptians to create their pyramids, there's always someone who believes it's all very mysterious. Surely you've come across these people. They like to talk about alien foremen and space drills. It's really hard to believe that all these huge monuments of limestone, sandstone, and granite were created without the help of modern devices. But to understand what the Egyptians actually used, you can turn to the frescoes. You see this one? It's very well preserved. It shows a man who uses a saw and it's clearly made of metal. The strongest metal back then was copper, but could copper tools work with stone? It seems that any copper saw would bend, but strange as it may seem, copper withstands. With a copper saw, it's possible to cut sandstone or limestone into pieces. Perhaps that's how Egyptian statues were carved and the pyramids were built. The Egyptians also had drills, which allowed them to make holes even in such hard material as granite and puzzle modern scientists. You know, I'm beginning to think if I start studying history, I'll discover that there's nothing new in the modern world. Everything we use today, everything that's considered the result of progress was already invented thousands of years ago. It's just that humanity has managed to forget about all the cool technologies and now we have to rediscover them. I'm going to study this issue more closely. In the meantime, you can subscribe to our channel, likes, bells, comments, you know the drill. See you later.